The term Wild West wasn't just a catchy nickname. It reflected the chaotic and unpredictable nature of the American frontier during the westward expansion. The everyday life of pioneers was often punctuated by bank robberies, saloon brawls, and gambling disputes, creating an environment where the unexpected was the norm. Given these conditions, it's no surprise that westward expansion birthed countless astonishing tales. The frontier wasn't just a place of daring adventures. It was a landscape marked by shocking violence and audacious deeds that are hard to fathom today. Beyond the well-known figures like Wyatt Earp and Billy the Kid, the Old West was filled with bizarre and scandalous stories, many of which have been forgotten over time. The frontier saw its share of unusual events, from little-known Civil War clashes to reports of UFO sightings. Yes, you heard that right. And even eerie tales of cannibalism and wild camels roaming the desert. The history of the Old West is far richer and stranger than most realize. In this video, we'll delve into 10 of the most surprising stories from this tumultuous era. So, let's saddle up and explore the untamed frontier together. The Civil War reached New Mexico. Ask any American about the Civil War, and they'll likely recount the fierce battles fought along the eastern seaboard, from Gettysburg and Antietam to Charleston and Sherman's march through Georgia. It's easy to assume that the conflict was confined to the East Coast, but that's not the full story. In fact, one of the most pivotal skirmishes in the Civil War occurred far to the west in New Mexico. This clash, though lesser known, played a crucial role in shaping the future of westward expansion. In late March of 1862, New Mexico was still largely untamed, a rugged frontier with immense strategic value. The northern part of the region provided access to the mountainous terrain of southern Colorado, promising lucrative mining opportunities in the Rocky Mountains. Controlling New Mexico meant holding a gateway to the west and, potentially, unfettered access all the way to California. Although far removed from the plantations of the Deep South, New Mexico held significant strategic importance, especially regarding the future of slavery in America. Both the Union and the Confederacy recognized the critical importance of this territory. Even though neither side had a substantial military presence in the area, they understood the potential long-term implications of controlling the West. Thus, on March 26, 1862, the Battle of Glorieta Pass commenced. With only about 2,500 soldiers involved, it may seem minor in comparison to other Civil War battles, but it proved to be a decisive early moment in the conflict. Initially, the Texas Confederates appeared to have the upper hand, nearly obliterating a contingent of Union forces. However, the tide turned when a determined group of New Mexico volunteers scaled the steep cliffs of Glorieta Mesa. Gaining the high ground unexpectedly, they were able to target a vulnerable group of Texan soldiers below. The Union ultimately won the bloody confrontation and, a few years later, the war itself. Though the Battle of Glorieta Pass is rarely highlighted in history books today, it was a key moment in the Civil War. Had the Confederates secured the area, they could have easily expanded westward, potentially invading Arizona and pushing into Mexico. With little resistance, they might have reached California, gaining valuable seaports and control over shipping lanes. The outcome of that fateful 1862 battle in New Mexico altered the course of the war and, by extension, American history. Cowboys saw aliens in the Old West. We often associate alien abduction stories and UFO sightings with modern times, believing they emerged alongside the rapid technological advancements of the last century. However, reports of UFOs have been circulating for centuries, and they were surprisingly common even in the Wild West. One of the most notable alien encounters in the West occurred in 1896 in Lodi, California. H.G. Shaw, a Civil War veteran and journalist, claimed that he and a friend encountered a group of extraterrestrials. Shaw detailed the event in a local newspaper. The otherworldly characters were seven feet tall and very slender, with small hands, fingers without nails, and feet twice as long as normal, and functioned similar to a monkey's feet. Shaw didn't stop at just a description. He speculated that these beings were from Mars, sent to Earth on a mission to capture one of its inhabitants. This account, published in the Lodi News Sentinel, eerily echoes the alien abduction stories that have become more common in recent decades, suggesting that such tales have deep historical roots. 
But Shaw's account wasn't the only unsettling UFO report from the West. Just a year later in 1897, residents of Aurora, Texas, claimed to have seen cigar-shaped flying saucers gliding through the sky. The story took a dramatic turn when townspeople reported that one of these UFOs allegedly crashed and exploded in the middle of the town. While skeptics dismissed it as a meteorite, the rumors of an alien visit lingered in Aurora for years. These strange occurrences suggest that life in small, isolated towns on the frontier may have led to some extraordinary observations. Whether these were products of imagination or genuine encounters is still up for debate. Of course, the most famous alien event, Roswell, occurred in 1947, long after the Wild West had faded into history. More recently, the mysterious Marfa lights in Texas have continued to fuel speculation about extraterrestrial visitors. Clearly, the American frontier has long been a hotbed for unusual sightings, both in the past and today. Cannibals roam the Old West. According to the stories passed down by native tribes in what is now Nevada, there was once a group of red-haired giants who roamed the region. These giants, known as the Saitakam, were said to have caused fear among the local tribes thousands of years ago. For generations, the northern Paiute tribe has shared tales about this mysterious group, describing them as a band of fiery-haired individuals with a fearsome reputation. The Paiute believed that the Saiteka were cannibals, their red hair supposedly a result of consuming a fibrous water plant. This unique diet, according to legend, not only gave them their distinctive hair color, but also fueled their pursuit of humans across the high deserts of the West long before settlers arrived. The Paiute claim they eventually put an end to the Sitaka's reign. As recounted by Sarah Winnemucca Hopkins, a northern Paiute tribal activist and archivist, the tribe's warriors were able to corner the Sitaka in a large cave. The Paiute then set a fire at the cave's entrance, effectively ensuring the Sitaka were never seen again. Hopkins noted that these stories have been passed down through generations, and she even possessed a family dress trimmed with reddish hair, believed to have come from the Sitaka. While this legend is deeply rooted in Paiute lore, modern historians and folklorists suggest that the story may have evolved over time. It's possible that the Sitaka were a real group with a genetic tendency toward red hair, but they were likely not giants. They might have been slightly taller than other tribes in the area, or perhaps their height was exaggerated over centuries of oral storytelling. In any case, the legend of the Sitaka remains an integral part of Paiute tradition with the tale of red-haired giants becoming a symbolic part of their history. As far as the Paiute are concerned, Nevada was once home to these unusual and imposing figures, outlawed slavery. As the Old West was being settled, slavery remained a widespread institution in the South. Even after the Civil War, former Confederate soldiers continued to engage in a proxy conflict, as seen in Texas's tragic family rivalries. However, before the war, the question of slavery also loomed large across the plains and other areas of the West as new states were being established. Take Oregon, for instance. The state's government was founded in 1844, and at that time, Oregon decided to prohibit slavery. A prominent local figure, Peter Burnett, drafted an amendment to ensure that slavery would be illegal in the state. The bill declared that slavery would never be allowed in Oregon, and it stipulated that families who brought enslaved individuals with them had three years to remove them from the state. If the enslaved individuals were not relocated within that time frame, they would be considered free. However, there was a troubling provision in Burnett's amendment. Section six of the bill mandated that any formerly enslaved individuals who were freed in Oregon had to leave the state immediately. The consequence for remaining was harsh and intended to deter black people from settling in Oregon. This legislation became known as Peter Burnett's Lash Law as it imposed penalties on freed slaves who stayed in Oregon, effectively banning black people from residing in the state. By 1849, this exclusionary policy was in full effect. While it is unclear if any freed slaves were actually subjected to the law's penalties, the bill succeeded in preventing black people from living in the newly established state. Burnett's concern was that freed slaves might foster feelings of resentment toward the white population. Remarkably, this exclusionary rule remained in place in Oregon until 1926, shaping the state's demographics and social landscape for decades. Putting the Hatfields and McCoys to shame. 
The world-renowned feud between the Hatfield and McCoy families along the Kentucky-West Virginia border wasn't the only notable family conflict of the past. In the Old West, a rivalry unfolded that arguably surpassed even that infamous dispute. Following the Civil War, Texas became the stage for a bitter conflict between two families, the Suttons and the Taylors. The tension began in 1866 when Buck Taylor fatally wounded an ally of the Sutton family. The situation escalated two years later with the deaths of Taylor himself and a man named Dick Chisholm during a horse sale that went awry. The Taylor family, still grieving, became more entrenched in their position. Rooted in Southern pride and resentment over the Confederacy's defeat, the Taylors found themselves at odds with the Suttons, who had the support of local Texas militia and state police favoring Reconstruction. By 1869, William Sutton, the patriarch of the Sutton family, had taken command of the police. He initiated raids across the state to apprehend cattle rustlers aligned with the Taylors. Over the next five years, DeWitt County, Texas, was engulfed in this escalating feud. Members of other families felt compelled to choose sides between the Suttons and Taylors, fearing repercussions for remaining neutral. Unfortunately, many who took a stand faced dire consequences in the ensuing confrontations. By 1874, the situation had deteriorated to such an extent that the Texas Rangers intervened. They dedicated months to mediating the dispute, but achieved limited success. The feud began to wane by the end of 1875, not due to effective negotiation, but because many of the most fervent participants from both families were no longer involved. The subsequent years witnessed additional unfortunate incidents, though their frequency decreased. By the close of the 1870s, the Taylors had lost at least 22 family members, while the Suttons mourned 13. Numerous friends and allies from both sides were also caught in the crossfire. For the next two decades, Texas courts grappled with the complex legal aftermath of the conflict. It wasn't until the end of the 19th century that most family members and associates began to move forward from this turbulent chapter. Camels once roamed the Wild West. Years before the Transcontinental Railroad became a reality, camels were considered a promising solution for westward expansion. While horses were integral to Western culture, camels offered unique advantages. They could carry heavy loads for long distances, and their evolutionary adaptation to harsh desert environments made them seemingly well-suited for the Western United States. In the 1840s and 1850s, camels were introduced to supply trains for shorter journeys across regions from Texas to Washington. By the late 1850s, Edward Fitzgerald Beale led several dozen camels on a 1,200-mile trek from the Midwest to California, arriving just north of Los Angeles. This impressive journey caught the attention of many pioneers. Confederate Major Henry Wayne expressed optimism about the potential of camels, asserting that Americans could manage them as effectively as, if not better than, those in the Middle East. His statement, while reflecting the era's attitudes, highlighted the enthusiasm surrounding the use of camels in the challenging Western terrain. In 1857, the United States government purchased hundreds of camels for logistical purposes, stationing them in Texas. However, as the Civil War erupted, the camels were largely forgotten until Confederate forces in Texas repurposed them for military use dubbing them the Camel Corps. The camels were employed to deliver mail and goods, while some were sold to finance the war effort. The 43rd Mississippi Infantry's camel, Old Douglas, became notable after sustaining injuries during the Siege of Vicksburg. Despite their initial promise, camels proved less effective for the Confederacy. Although capable of carrying heavy loads, their slow pace and temperamental nature made them less practical than horses for transportation and mules for carrying supplies. In the years that followed, wild camels released from service occasionally appeared across the West. One such camel, known as the Red Ghost, became the subject of frontier legends in Arizona. However, as the West became more settled, the remaining wild camels gradually disappeared, leaving their brief and unusual chapter in American history largely forgotten. Gamblers put modern betting to shame. From the allure of Las Vegas to the rise of online sports betting, Gambling has long been woven into the fabric of American life. This tradition was no different in the Old West. In many ways, it was just part of the frontier spirit. After all, setting out for the West was a gamble in itself. Pioneers faced numerous dangers on their journey, making the entire trip a risky endeavor. By the time they arrived, 
they were already accustomed to taking chances. Once settlers reached the West, it was natural for them to engage in card games as a way to pass the time and earn some money. Gambling became such a common part of life that it was seen as a respectable profession. Much like doctors, saloon keepers, and lawmen, gamblers held a certain status in society. One historian even noted that in the early West, gambling was considered as legitimate a profession as the clergy, law, or medicine. Throughout the West, high-stakes games attracted full-time gamblers who traveled from town to town, earning their living at the card table. Some, however, resorted to trickery and deceit to outsmart locals. After collecting their winnings, they would quickly move on to avoid any repercussions. In California, professional gambling was particularly prominent. Throughout the 19th century, card players flocked to the state, offering their skills in exchange for cash. For many, gambling became more than just a pastime. It was a destination and way of life in the ever-expanding frontier. The Crazy Crash at Crush William Crush, a railroad executive with a flair for the dramatic, had a grand idea to spark interest in rail travel at the close of the 19th century. In 1894, he sought to fund a new venture called the Missouri-Kansas-Texas Railroad Company, known as the Katy. To generate excitement and raise the necessary funds, Crush organized a large-scale carnival in a temporary Texas town he named after himself. The highlight of this event was the planned collision of two 35-ton train engines intended to demonstrate the immense power of the railroad. This spectacle, unusual even by Old West standards, attracted massive attention. On the day of the event, the town of Crush became the second largest city in Texas, with over 40,000 people gathering to witness the spectacle. As promised, Crush sent two steam-powered trains hurtling toward each other on the tracks at speeds exceeding 50 miles per hour. The collision resulted in a powerful explosion, sending steam, fire, and debris soaring into the sky. Tragically, two people lost their lives in the explosion, and hundreds more were injured. Yet despite the calamity, the event succeeded in capturing the public's imagination and demonstrated the railroad's power. One of the onlookers, J.C. Dean, was awarded $10,000 by the Katy Railroad Company after losing an eye in the accident. In the aftermath, the railroad's leadership was shocked by the outcome and initially dismissed William Crush. However, they quickly reconsidered after realizing how much attention the event had garnered. Crush was rehired, proving that, even in those days, all publicity could be turned into an opportunity. Whiskey in the Old West Whiskey was a staple on the frontier, much like gambling. However, the whiskey served in the Old West was far from the refined spirits we know today. The names alone, Forty Rods, Tarantula Juice, Taos Lightning, hinted at their wild and potent nature. These drinks often contained shocking ingredients, including dangerous substances like strychnine. Other concoctions might include turpentine or tobacco oil. For many, taking that first shot meant immediately needing a second just to dull the memory of the first. If a drinker could endure it, a few rounds were enough to send them into a deep, chemically-induced sleep, only to repeat the cycle the next day. From a practical standpoint, it's not entirely surprising. Saloons were few and far between, with vast distances separating frontier towns. Supply lines were inconsistent, and there were no regulations governing food or drink in the 19th century West. Without any rules defining what whiskey should or shouldn't be, saloon keepers got creative and sometimes a little too creative, but they always managed to keep things interesting. The idea of drinking a shot of strychnine or turpentine just to get a buzz seems unthinkable today. Thankfully, the West has long been settled and we'll never have to face that question. Where are all the mines? While the tale of the camel known as Red Ghost might blend fact with fiction, it's far from the only myth that circulated in the Old West. The frontier was ripe with legends, rumors, and stories of mysterious, fantastical, and improbable events. Among these, none were more enduring than the captivating tales of lost mines and hidden fortunes. The West saw waves of settlers drawn by the lure of gold and silver rushes. Thousands of men, both young and old, left their lives back East, driven by a mix of hope, daring, or sheer restlessness in pursuit of a fresh start in the West. Most of these fortune seekers found little more than disappointment while sifting for gold but the few who struck it rich fueled a lingering belief 
that untapped wealth was still out there, waiting to be found. Stories of lost mines and concealed treasures quickly took root. According to these legends, miners had hidden their riches to keep them safe from thieves, and those treasures remained out there, just waiting to be rediscovered. Despite the fact that most of these tales were likely fabricated, they persisted, spreading eastward and keeping the dream of a sudden windfall alive long after the gold rushes had ended. One of the most enduring of these legends is the Lost Dutchman's Gold Mine, said to be hidden in the aptly named Superstition Mountains near Phoenix. According to the story, a German immigrant named Jacob Waltz discovered the mine nearly 200 years ago. Although prospectors have been searching for it ever since, no one has ever found it, and some have even lost their lives trying. Other legendary lost mines, such as the Wheelbarrow Mine in Idaho, Adams Diggings in New Mexico, Janney's Chimney in Washington, and the Lost Blue Bucket Mine in Oregon, continue to intrigue treasure hunters and modern-day prospectors. The Old West is a treasure trove of strange and surprising facts that go beyond the usual cowboy tales. From hidden legends to unusual customs, the frontier was full of mysteries that still intrigue us today. If you enjoyed uncovering these oddities, there's so much more to explore. Subscribe to our channel and ride along with us as we dig deeper into the curious corners of history. Who knows what other strange facts we'll uncover together?